During a press briefing on Monday, China's force foreign ministry spokesman said, this was not a missile, this was a spacecraft. U.S. Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin was also asked about the report during a joint press briefing Monday with his counterpart in the country of Georgia. And this is what he had to say. I'm not going to comment on those specific reports. Um, what I can tell you is that uh, we watch closely China's development of, uh, of uh, armament and, and advanced capabilities uh, and systems that will only increase uh, tensions in the region. You've heard me say a number of times that uh, China is my facing challenge, and we're going to remain focused on that. So the U.S. is watching, but are we doing anything in response? Joining me now to talk about this and more is U.S. Representative Vicki Hartzler, who's a member of the U.S. Armed Services Committee. She's a commissioner of the Congressional Executive Commission on China. She represents the 4th Congressional District of Missouri. Representative Hartzler, welcome back to Washington Watch. Well, thank you, Joseph. It's good to be here. Well, we are glad to have you. Um, what do you make of this report that of the missile, the hypersonic missile that China has tested? Well, it's very concerning if it is true. Uh, we knew that China was working to develop one, and we know that Russia is also working to develop hypersonics. In the United States, we, we too are trying to come up with this capability that's reliable and it's very effective. And so the thought that they might have succeeded in actually testing one at this point is very, very concerning. And that's why on Armed Services Committee, we have been focused on going after China and in the National Defense Authorization Act, this large piece of legislation that we pass every year that funds our military, we have significant resources in there to develop the hypersonic capability ourselves. Uh, there's already in the process of researching it, but we need to uh, further move this along as well as to be, have a strong national defense to be a deterrence against China forever having to use it or considering using it against us or our allies. Now we hear the term hypersonic missile and it sounds exciting, but can you explain to those of us who are not uh, missile people, what exactly this technology uh, would give them the ability to do and why it's concerning? Well, it's concerning because it is so fast. It is uh, four or five times the speed of sound, and it's it's uh, launched on a rocket, and then it is able to glide at low orbit. And supposedly, this report says that China's test had this uh, missile orbit completely around the globe and then hit their close within the target, I'd say 20 miles, but for a first test, that is very, very concerning. And it is so fast, it is very, very difficult to detect on radars. It is also very difficult to shoot it down because of the speed and the range that it is able to, uh, to do. So it's a, a new capability that, as I said, several countries, including ourselves, are trying to perfect because we know it could be very, very lethal. And most importantly, we hope that it would be a deterrent for any country ever going to war against us or our allies if we have this capability. What do you make of the statement from the Chinese government that this was a spacecraft and not a missile? Well, I don't believe anything the Chinese say, and I would say they don't want the world to know they have this capability if they do. So, you know, my uh, thinking is that they're probably not being truthful, but we really don't know. I'd have to have an intelligence briefing, which I haven't had yet on it. Uh, but the, China is, we know, uh, developing all of their militaries at a very fast clip. We know that they have surpassed us in some areas. And that's why I and others in Armed Services Committee have been so focused on China. And I have been trying to let people know about the threats that we are facing. And I've produced a four-part video series that people can watch at my website, heartsler.house.gov. I would encourage and urge everyone to go there and to see these videos we have put together. The first one is on the military threats uh, facing us from China. The second one is economic threats, where we go over the Belt and Road Initiatives and the debt trap diplomacy. The third one is the um, 
uh, coercion and, and the Confucius Institutes and the soft power threats. And the fourth one is the human rights abuses and what they're doing with almost 2 million people in concentration camps in the Xinjiang province. Americans need to know what China is doing, that they have a plan and a, a will to have world domination. And they're moving forward at a very rapid pace to get there. And we need to be ready for them as Americans. Uh, remind people again, where can they go to watch that series that you put together? Hartzler.house.gov. Hartzler.house.gov, uh, Representative Vic, Vicki Hartzler. Another question, much of the commentary around this missile technology has suggested that the U.S. has been distracted in its war on terrorism and therefore kind of missed this development of the Chinese. Do you think that's a fair assessment of the situation? Well, like I said, I would have to get the intelligence report to see if this truly was a surprise and if they truly did have this test. Um, but I can tell you that we have been investing in hypersonic research and development for several years. I've seen prototypes and the different companies that are competing. So we're well along in uh, coming up with this capability ourselves. Of course, Russia is also trying very quickly to come up with this. Uh, North Korea, uh, very concerningly, uh, has said, Kim Jong-un uh, recently, that he too has successfully test-fired a hypersonic missile. We don't know if he, that's true or not, but uh, this is certainly a technology that many people are seeking. And uh, it's very important that we, we focus our resources on this because like I said, it is very difficult to detect and it is very lethal. One of the great concerns about this is the potential for hypersonic missiles to carry atomic warheads, which, of course, has all sorts of terrible implications. I do want to change the subject with you, though, uh, because this is not the only thing happening in Washington, D.C. this week. The Democrats continue to negotiate uh, their spending package. Uh, what's the latest? Do you think they're going to get this done? Well, I certainly hope not, because it's very bad for America in many fronts, uh, puts us further in debt as a nation, would further fuel inflation, would further make our businesses uncompetitive to other countries, further kill jobs, further uh, infringe on our freedoms. It is a bad piece of legislation. And it's sad that the Biden administration and so many Democrats are continuing to push for this radical bill, three and a half trillion dollars of more spending to advance a socialist Green New Deal agenda. Uh, from what I have heard as far as negotiations, they probably have the votes in the House, but we have two senators, Senator Manchin as well as Cinema, who have said this is too big. This is uh, has provisions in it we do not support. And I do applaud Senator Manchin for saying We've got to have the high protections in here because the Senate, I mean, the House Democrats have removed those basic provisions which protect taxpayers from having to pay for abortions. And uh, Senator Manchin has said that's a red line. He would not vote for a bill if it would uh, do away with those uh, protections. So I hope that he will stay firm and that he said says not only no to uh, taxpayer-funded abortions, but also no to this very, very high uh, costly bill. And I hope that uh, they will not be able to get the votes. Now, the cost of this bill is, of course, one of the uh, great concerns with it. The White House Twitter account yesterday said something. I want to read this to you and give you a chance to respond because it, it suggests the way that they're trying to sell this to the public. And here's what they said. They said, quote, the cost of the Build Back Better agenda is zero dollars. The president's plan won't add to our national deficit and has no one making under $400,000 per year will see their taxes go up a single penny. It is fully paid for by ensuring big corporations and the very wealthy pay their fair share. What's your response to the idea that the Build Back Better agenda will cost zero dollars? Oh, it, it's laughable. It is absolutely a lie. I mean, this is has the largest tax increases in American history in this. Uh, 
So, but there's still a part of it that's even not going to pay for beyond that. But with all these taxes, uh, it's going to make it life harder for everyone, especially those with low and middle income. First of all, because of inflation, which is already hurting them when you go to the gas pump or go to the grocery store. But the Tax Foundation has said that these taxes increases on businesses are going to come down through the increased cost of goods for the lower and middle income individuals such that they will pay for 75% of this bill within 10 years. There's also a tax in here on, on natural gas and methane. A lot of people uh, use natural gas to uh, heat their homes in the winter time. So that is going to increase costs. So it absolutely is going to increase costs and taxes on everybody. This is a lie. It just as a, as a matter of basic economics, it's puzzling how you can say we're going to spend three and a half trillion dollars, but it's going to cost no money. Those uh, seem to be mutually exclusive choices, uh, but alas, we're being presented with the idea that you can have your cake and eat it too. Uh, lots of talk about the number one and a half trillion is what some people are asking for. Three and a half trillion, we know what the progressives want. Uh, perhaps a negotiation to two trillion. Why the focus on the number rather than the policies involved? Well, because they know that these policies would not be supported by the American public. Uh, nobody wants to have all these tax increases on various things. They don't want to have a, a taxpayer dollars going to form a new uh, civilian climate corps to, to pay young activists to go around and do Green New Deal uh, projects. Um, they don't want to see their money wasted and uh, pay for for child care and, and put limits on it that's going to close faith-based child centers and, and going to close home-based health uh, or child care. I mean, there's just so many bad things in this bill that they know Americans wouldn't want if they talked about policy. Representative Vicki Hartzler, we will bring you back to talk about it more in the future, but we are out of time. Thank you for joining us today. Appreciate it very much. Thank you, Joseph.